It's here. This is an LK150 knitting machine. This is a knitting machine that I recommend for beginners. If you've seen my video about how to buy your first knitting machine, you'll know that I recommend looking for one of these secondhand first. And I looked at my local Craigslist this morning and there was one of these for sale near me. So these do come up fairly often. Despite that, I decided to get one of these brand new and do an unboxing so I can show y'all what to expect from a full set of materials. Sometimes parts and tools get lost with the secondhand machines. There are links to this machine and my buying guide in the description. I recommend this machine for beginners because they're still being manufactured, so it's easy to find replacement parts and tools. It's easy to learn on, and it works best with category two and category three yarn. That's gonna be sport weight and DK. And those are easy to find in any craft store. The older vintage standard gauge machines usually need a lot of maintenance and only work with much finer yarns, which are harder to find. All right, let's do this. First, let's acknowledge the bruise on my arm. It exists. I am okay. It is too warm to wear sleeves, so we're just gonna deal. I already cut the tape off of this to make it a little easier. Oh wait, now first. Let's look at the box. Clearly labeled LK150 knitting machine and P 6.5 millimeters. That means the pitch or the distance between the needles is 6.5 millimeters. That means this is a mid gauge machine. Standard gauge machines are 4.5 millimeters apart and bulkies are nine millimeters apart. So this is right in the middle. All right, let's see what's in the box. Ooh, fancy, fancy, fancy. All right, we got a lot of stuff in styrofoam. The most important thing to start with is the manual. Unlike most things that you buy these days, the manual for this is actually really helpful and it should show you how to get started and how to use all of the parts that it comes with. This is just an insert because there's more to this carriage than it looks like there originally was. Cool, some extra needles, information about yarn, we can look at this later. Hold on to the manual. Okay, so to start with, we have some weights. These are gonna be the cast on weights and connectors to hold them together into one larger cast on weight. And then we have some claw weights. This only comes with two claw weights. It's enough to get started, but you'll probably want more in the course of your knitting. I'll put a link to where to get more claw weights in the description. And then we have clamps. Knitting machines take a lot of back and forth force. They need to be clamped down to the table or the counter that you're working on. We have the tension mast. This is gonna hold the yarn up and It'll go with this connector piece for the bed and the attention wires, which I will show you how to set up in a minute. And we have a ruler. I do not understand what this is for. I have no idea. We'll get back to that. And then over here, we have the yarn guide for the tension mast. Some of these hook things that are used to park yarn when you're working with stripes. Row counter, love these, cause I can't count. Every time the carriage goes past, it manually flips this lever and it'll count up. And then we have some tools. Let's see, we have the standard transfer tools. These are used for increasing and decreasing and adding eyelets and doing all of your hand manipulated stitches. And then a hook that's useful for cast on, cast off, picking up dropped stitches and reforming into purl and knit stitches. Then we have the needle pushers. These are useful for manipulating more than one needle at a time. 
Um, this is going to probably be every other needle and then these other multiple so you can do different designs. Spare needles. Oh, it comes with a tapestry needle for sewing your projects together. And then ravel cord. I've never actually had any ravel cord because I always buy my machine secondhand and I've never thought to buy my own. But this is used for connecting different pieces together and it makes it easier to remove things like waste yarn. Okay, let's get the machine out. Is it stuck? Here's our knitting machine. Look at her. Okay. Let me pull it out of the box. You're going to want to hold on to the box because it's the easiest way to transport this around if you're like taking it to a meetup or you're moving or you're going on vacation. Let's look at the instructions and get this set up for a first cast on. There we go. Okay. So the first thing it wants us to do is pull the carriage rests out makes the bed slightly wider. Let's see if we can find this. We got a carriage rest. These are just like buttons. Okay. Oh, and it's got like some non-slip stuff here. Okay. And then this part goes into this thing, goes there goes there. Where does it go? <laughs> I know it goes in one of these places. Oh, it goes here. Okay. So that's part of the tension mass. And then this appears to be the same on both sides. Put that in there and then the yarn guide, take the plastic off. Mm, no, that's not the right thing. The yarn guide goes on, I guess it doesn't matter. Goes on like that. And then I'm just gonna flip the, oh, and they're tangled. These are the guide wires, auto tension unit thingy. And that goes up here. And it's all out of frame. <laughs> no, it goes there. Haha. And it's running into my camera. Uh, it might cause problems in the future. Okay. And that's what's to click in there. All right, that's a lot more stable. And then it wants me to clamp the whole thing down to the surface that I'm working on. We will do that. So there should be little slots. And let me show you that. There are slots in the bottom of the bed for the clamps. I've managed to get my tension wires tangled. Come on. Okay. That's what I get for trying to... My camera has overheated. We're going to take a break. Okay. My camera overheated, so we're back. There are little slots in the bottom of the sending machine for the clamps to fit into, so I'm just going to find those and clamp this down so we can get started. And let's center this a bit under the other camera. Where are you? You're there. And 
I'm nice and secure. This is not going anywhere. They want me to attach the row counter. Looks like it just fits into the slot here. Cool. I love the little mechanical things. The yarn rests click in like this. It's all set up. That was really quick, right out of the box, easy to follow instructions, and now we're ready to go. So let's talk a bit about how knitting machines work. Each stitch is held on a different needle. We call these needles, but they're actually latch hooks. You can see the latch here. And the way that this works is that there are channels underneath the carriage that push the needles in and out as they go. And what happens is that when there's a loop of yarn in a given hook, the carriage pushes the needle out and the loop goes past the latch. And then the carriage brings in more yarn. And when the needle gets pushed back, that latch closes and the first loop winds up pulling over the needle. And that's how we create new loops. The dial on the top of the carriage is for tension. There's a little indicator at where it is right here. And higher numbers are larger stitches and lower numbers are smaller stitches. And that just corresponds with how far the needles get pulled in every time. If we take the carriage off the bed, there's a little lever on the back of the carriage and if you pull it down, it'll release from the bed. If you look at the inside of the carriage, you can see how the butts of the needles fit through various channels in the carriage. And when you change the stitch dial, you can watch different parts of the carriage move. Like, this is me increasing the dial, and this is me decreasing the dial. There we go. And when you're done, you can just pop it back on the bed. Let's do a really basic cast on and let me show you how to get started. For this kind of knitting machine, you need to weigh down the piece that you're working with and figuring out how much weight you need is actually a lot of trial and error and a lot of getting used to the yarn that you're working with and the machine that you're working with. This one comes with these weighted metal claw things. These are called cast on combs and they come with a connector piece so that you can hook them together. Oh, that goes in there. Goes in there. And then goes in there. And there's another one of these so we can hook all three together. To actually use yarn with this, we need to feed it through the tension mast here. So it goes first through the wire guide at the bottom. And then we bring it through the tension dial. That's this thing here. It's got a metal part that's going to open and close. And make sure that the yarn is flush against the cylinder in there. And then there's a metal loop over here that it goes through. And then pull down one of the guide wires and put it in the loop. And then if it's feeding too quickly through the guide like this is, you can increase the tension. There, that looks pretty good. And then there are plastic like slots here that the yarn should fit into. And then it stays. If your yarn tension gets funky, you probably need to adjust either the dial here or make sure that the yarn's actually in the guide wire because sometimes you can forget that. So I'm going to show you a simple cast on and then knit a few rows. So this tool is designed to push every other needle and we're going to use it to pull out every other needle for like 20 on either side of zero. So these are the needles we're going to work with and to get them into the correct position to start with, I'm just going to run the carriage over them. See, they automatically get sent to the right position. So we are going to feed our yarn into the carriage and it's got a slot here in the front. And there we go, it's in. And pick a tension. I'm gonna go with six 
finding the right tension for your given yarn and your machine and what you're knitting is a lot of trial and error. But this is a starting point for me. So we're going to knit. And you can see that every other needle picked up a stitch down here. And then we are going to hang the cast on comb on the spaces between those stitches. And then there's a little notch right here for me to hook the end of the yarn into. So it just holds there. Now that we're here, we're going to bring out the rest of the needles. And then we can just start knitting. And then keep an eye on the first few rows that you knit and see how the tension feels. If the carriage is really hard to move, then your tension is probably too low and you need to wind up to a higher number or you're using the wrong yarn. Remember, these machines work best with category two and category three yarn. And then you just knit. It's just knitting, knitting, knitting. Machine knitting goes very, very fast, so you only ever want to work from cakes or cones of yarn. Don't attempt balls of yarn. Don't attempt skeins. Uh, they pull and you get tangles and you won't notice it quick enough and it'll cause all kinds of problems. So after we've knit a few rows, you can see that the work starts to pull in. And the way to combat that is to put claw weights on the end. You can just like hook them there. Hook them there. And then these need to be moved up as you go. Now, to make a piece bigger, to increase, you bring out a new needle on the end where you're working and then hook one of your transfer tools, I'm using the three prong tool because it makes the edges look a little bit better, onto the needles, pull them all the way out past the latches, and then push the needles back in and it'll transfer those stitches onto your tool. Then we can just move that over one stitch and put them back on the needles. Doing it this way will leave you with one needle that doesn't have anything on it. We can just leave it like that, it'll create an eyelet but if you want to fill that space and have it not be an eyelet, you can go over to the needle next to it and pick up the purl bump from the stitch before and then transfer it onto that needle. And there we go. It's a similar process for decreasing. We just pick up the last three needles with our tool, pull them out past the latches, push them back in to transfer the stitches onto the tool, and then move them over one. Transfer there. And then make sure to push that last needle back in or it's gonna pick up new stitches. And there we go. That's basic stockinette on the knitting machine. Uh, you can do a lot with this. And I recommend reading through the manual to see what else is possible with this machine. To remove the work from the machine, I'm going to remove all of the weights first. <laughs> if you don't do this, they will fall on your feet and that gets painful, including the cast on comb. And then pull the yarn out of the carriage. And if you run an empty carriage over the needles, all of the work will come off because the needles get pushed out past that loop and then there's no new yarn pulled in to make another loop. Ta-da! So this leaves it with a raw edge. This leaves it with a raw edge. There are ways to bind off on the machine, but here is our first piece on this new machine. This is a nice little machine, um, and this is actually cheaper than what I spent on my first knitting machine which was vintage and secondhand, but also can do a lot more than what this one can. Um, these machines are pretty basic, but you can do a lot with hand manipulation. You can do ferrile patterns, you can do lace, you can do tuck stitches, you can do all kinds of things. 
here we are at the end, and you may be asking yourself, if this is the machine that I recommend for beginners, why didn't I already have one? Um, I don't do anything the easy way. And I didn't really get into machine knitting for the knitting. I got into machine knitting for the software. So I jumped right into the deep end and bought myself a vintage Brother standard gauge machine and then ripped its guts out and replaced them with an Arduino. And now <laughs> I work in the AYAB code base, fixing bugs and adding features. Um, but I understand that's not for everybody. And this is part of my grand plan to create more machine knitters. Like it feels like, <laughs> it feels like a dying hobby. It feels like something that a lot of people aren't familiar with. So I'm doing what I can to spread the love and bring more people into this hobby. I recognize that my software approach is not for everyone. So if you're interested in machine knitting for the knitting aspect, this is a really good machine to start with. Next steps from here. I'm going to get to know this machine better. I've been machine knitting for a long time, but it still is gonna take some time and effort to learn a new machine and get the muscle memory down for something like this. And then I'm going to put together some like basic, basic tutorials so that if you get one of these and you get it out of the box, you should be able to get started with a sweater or something else. If you're impatient to get started, check out my series on hats that I did last winter. Um, hats are great because they're just rectangles and rectangles are easy. Subscribe if this sounds interesting to you. If you're thinking about getting a machine, let me know what kind in the comments. If you already have one of these, let me know what you make with it. Thanks for watching. Happy knitting. Would there be a good thumbnail in there? I don't even know. I probably need to get some pickups. Next steps from here. Come on. I can do this. I've been filming for too long. Oh God. Okay, okay. Um.